nagkakukurong dito. And I said, I would stake my honor, my life, and even the presidency. Good morning, MPC. Happy Monday. Let's now have Presidential Chief Legal Counsel and Presidential Spokesperson, Salvador Panelo. Good morning, Hello, sir. Hello, good morning. I'm ready. Joseph? <laughs> Joseph Cagad. <laughs> sir, uh, okay. Madaming sinay ng CPRD na mga laws, no? but I'd like to focus on the tax amnesty and in particular the veto message. Um, he's requesting that a uh, Congress pass a general amnesty, tax, general tax amnesty that will include a uh, lifting of the bank secrecy uh, provision for fraud. Elaboration, please. Para hindi ko yata na basa. Ano na basa ko? Vinito niya, vinito niya yung general tax amnesty. Hindi, sir. Ito, game. Hindi ko nabasa yung portion niya. Wala yung sa briefer ko. Po, sir. Meron ba yun? Sir, your staff agrees. So, it's two versus Ali. one. <laughs> Yan na nga. Yeah. Ito, ah, sir. Hindi. Now, I, uh, na. Sige, I'll respond to that. Sinama niya yun kasi nga, because of the confidentiality, hindi mo malalaman mm -hmm. kung totoo o hindi. Mm -hmm. Pero kung ililip mo nga naman yun, hindi ka na makapagsinungaling kasi madaling tingnan yung deposits mo sa banko. Yun ang reason kung bakit. And the term fraud... Um, the term is what? In, the term fraud... Fraud. Includes what, sir? O, oh, di lahat ng klaseng pandaraya, lahat ng klaseng pagtatago. So, for example, sir, um, in recent uh, memory, no? Halimbawa, sa Salen, yeah. um, there's an allegation perhaps of a false declaration or mis um, dishonest declaration. Pwedeng ipas ko doon? Oh, fraud? siyempre. Dishonesty is fraud. Uh -huh. That's another term for dishonesty. Fraud. So, pwede, sir? Yeah. So, kung halimbawa, sir, we come across mga ganun naman mga cases na sabihin uh, does not reflect that the salon of a particular government official does not reflect the actual and real uh, worth, net worth, pwedeng when this is passed, when, when such is passed, pwede pumasok doon. Pwede yung pumasok sa tax amnesty. Oo. Uh -huh. Ay, Ganun kung fraud eh, hindi po pwede. Pwede yung i-lift yung bank, bank, bank secrecy. Pwede yun. Depende kung ano yung batas na ipapasa nila, kung ipapasok nila yun. Eh, kung, kung i-exclude nila, hindi nga sama. So, palaging sa Congress pa rin yun. But of course, the policy direction is that the government wants honesty, right? Oh, yes. Will Congress follow? Oh, and then we have members of the Congress as honorable and... Responsive to the needs. You think? Bakit naman? Mungkong wala ka ng wala ka ng tiwala sa mga. I'm asking for proof, sir. Member of Congress. You're asking for proof. Members of Congress, media, especially Joseph Morong, is suspicious. Okay, yun naman mo na, sir. Is unpersuaded. Sir, pasok yung salian, de ba? Sa fraud. Pwede po masok yun. Kasi but, 60, violation of the 6713 yeah, yun, right? Pwede pumasok yun, but depende sa 
Congress kung anong ilalagay nila ron. Okay, sir. Thank you. Ina. Sir, how much of a priority will this be, having the President push for the lifting of the bank secrecy provision? Is he going to make a public appeal to his allies in Congress to prioritize this? I think he has already made his position on the matter, so it's for Congress to respond. Sir, how confident are you that um, lawmakers will respond uh, positively, considering, for example, kung pasok nga yung um, SALN, just recently, di ba, ang gusto nga nila, sir, ang SALN, i-release lang upon approval of all members. The we plenary, are, rather. We are confident that members of Congress will fulfill their duty to the Filipino people as mandated by the Constitution, which is they should be honest in all dealings and they should pursue a policy of accountability and transparency in the realm of governance. Okay, may follow up? RJ? Okay. Other issue? Henry? Secretary, good morning. Morning, Henry. Um, mayroong artikulo dito sa Pinoy ako blog na ang nakalagay po rito ay uh, Dear President Duterte, balita ko hindi mo daw kilala si Wilfredo King. And then, uh, the Pinoy ako blog, uh, citing an example, ito daw si uh, Wilfredo King as a chairman, president, and uh, chief executive officer at Century Peak Metals Holdings Corporation. Isa daw po ito sa labindalawang minahan na pinahintulutan ng DNR na mag-maintain ng mining uh, operations kasama ng labing dalawang o labing isang iba pa. And then, uh, ito raw pong uh, kumpanya ni Mr. King ay mayroong uh, projects sa uh, Cebu at saka po sa uh, Bohol. In particular, yung sa Cebu is 10.9 billion cement manufacturing plant na ang sinasabi po rito ay nakakuha raw po ng uh, uh, 100 years uh, 100% of the country's cement needs for 100 uh, years contract. Ito yung sinasabi rito uh, Secretary. Kaya ang tanong dito totoo ba na hindi kilala ng Pangulo si Mr. King Even sa ganitong kalalaking mga <clears throat> investment at uh, negosyo dito sa bansa? Even assuming that those facts you stated are correct, it doesn't follow that the President will know this particular person. You must remember that the policy of the President is he does not interfere with the department heads relative to their governance of their departments. So ang nakakakilala sa kanila, kung kilala man sila, ay yung mga department heads. Uh, si Presidente, ang interes lang palagi, pag may reklamo ng corruption in connection with any dealings with every department, dun siya nakikialam. So, hindi talaga kilala. Ang uh, binabanggit po dito nitong uh, Ako Pinoy Vlog ay hindi po ba report sa inyo ng Board of Investment sa Cebu ang tungkol kay Mr. King? I mean, uh, hindi po ba report sa inyo, ibig sabihin sa Presidente? Tungkol lang, tungkol ba saan? Sa investment niya? Yes, sir. Gaya na nga nang sinabi ko, yung mga departamento, they are the ones in charge. So kung okay ang kanilang mga transaksyones at wala namang bahid ng korupsyon, hindi, hindi nakikalam si Presidente. It's the only, the only time that he would interfere in any governance among departments is when there is a complaint reaching his office that there is an anomaly or any corruption involved in that particular transaction. So para po sa palasyo, ano po si Mr. Kings? Hindi nga kilala. Sinabi nga ni Presidente, hindi kilala. Kung investor man siya, he's just an investor. Alright. Thank you, sir. Okay. Questions? MPC? Joseph. So there was also an allegation that you know, after Mr. Kang filed the 
uh, libel case against Rappler that he was able to, in terms of sequence of events, no? um, he was able to corner a PPP project, I think, in Cavite. So do you think it has uh, something to do with the way he, what he did and then what he gained? <laughs> I don't even know the facts of this case. I don't even know who he is. I don't know about the case. Kaya wala, walang kinalaman. Walang kaalaman lang si Presidente. Saka nga pala, la, alam mo palaging sinasabi yung, kanina in-interview ako sa ni Christian Esgada sa ABS-CBN. Ang nakakalimutan kasi ng mga invoking freedom of expression and of the press na yung ordinaryong mamamaya, may karapatan din na magdemanda kahit na kanino, kiperyodista siya, kikolumnista, kung nilabag ang kanyang karapatan. Meron din silang karapatan. Hindi naman, hindi ba sinasabi na nga natin, maraming beses sinabi na mataas na hukuman, na yung kalayan ng pagpapahayag ay hindi absolute. Pag nilabag mo naman ang karapatan ng isang tao, ay mananagot ka rin sa batas. Ang naging problema yata kay Maria, eh, she wants a special treatment. Eh, hindi naman po pwede yun. Lahat tayo ay pantay-pantay. Tsaka yung kawalan na karanasan ng mga abogado niya, sinisisi niya sa gobyerno. <laughs> ah, paano naman yan? Fair, fair should be fair. May follow-up ka, Ina? Questions? MPC? Oh, sige, Ina. Sir, this is about the BIR's uh, request for assistance sa PAGCOR. Mm. Um, gusto po ng BIR na mag-register na sa kanila talaga ang lahat ng mga POGO. What's POGO? Yung uh, online gaming. Ah. Um, in, in, uh, they want also to uh, find out daw po kasi how many Chinese workers talaga are working in that industry. Does this mean um, that is the president aware of this? Is there a concern? that uh, there may be many Chinese workers na hindi natin alam, unrecorded, uh, undocumented dito, working in Pogo? Yeah, that's, a good, that's a good measure to determine exactly how many Chinese nationals who are here in violation of our laws. Palagay ko maganda yung sinasabi ng BAR Commissioner. Because the statement of the BAR specifically mentions Chinese workers. I'm wondering, bakit, sir? Um, are we starting to be alarmed, perhaps, with the number of illegal Chinese workers talaga? Um, considering yung recent concerns din dun sa Build Build Bill. Siguro hindi, hindi naman alarm. Kundi siguro gusto talaga ma-determine ng BIR yung number of nationals. Kasi konektado yun sa declaration ng income. Para ma kakolekta tayo ng tamang corporate tax. Last, sir. Sir, dun sa, so na-veto na po yung general amnesty, also the Coco Levy. Then I recall a senator saying that um, the PLLO may be inefficient in carrying out its task. Um, as far as Malacanang is concerned, is the president still happy with uh, P the PLLO? in uh, bridging the gap between Malacanang and Congress para maiwasan yung mga pag-veto? Alam po ninyo, yung PLLO, ang gagawin lang naman nila, sasabihin nila, oh, ito yung measure na gusto ni Presidente. But you cannot also deprive Congress of independently assessing or evaluating the wisdom, the need, of a particular legislation. Kung sa pananaw nila, hindi nila type yung the entire measure, di ba baguhin nila yun? Karapatan nila yun. That's part of democratic process. Ang nabanggit po kasi dati yata in the case of the Coco Levy bill, hindi daw na iparating sa kanila that the President had some concerns about the measure which perhaps could have been addressed had the PLO, PLLO communicated this better. <coughs> Unang una, the concerns in the coconut levy is publicly known. Matagal na nating naririnig ang reklamo dyan. You don't even need a government agency to tell members of Congress kung ano ang suliranin sa coconut levy. Alam nila yun eh. Pero sabi ko nga, iba-iba kasi ang pananaw. Ang feeling nila, okay na itong ginawa nila ang safeguard. Ang feeling ni Presidente, baka kulang pa yan. Tagdagan pa natin. So, ganun lang yan. 
So it's not uh, it's not the fault of the PLLO. I don't think so. Okay, thank you. Um, Pia. Hi, sir. See, si Congressman yeah. Rolando Andaya Jr. is claiming that the government apparently owes several private contractors around 100 billion daw in 2018 because of uh, corruption in DBM. He's what? Because of corruption. He's the one. No? He's complaining that. He's claiming. Claiming that. Yes, that the government apparently owes several private contractors 100 billion daw po. Is the government owning them? Yes. Um, apparently because of corruption daw po or corrupt practices in the DBM. Can we get your reaction on this, sir? Why should the government own the contractors because of corruption? Oh, oh sir. Kaya nga, exactly. Ba bakit mag magkakautang ang gobyerno dito sa mga contractors? Dahil sa corruption. Pa parang walang koneksyon eh. Magkakaroon ng corruption yung mga contractors kung may nilalagyan sila para makuha sila. Pero yung ang gobyerno may utang sa kanila, hindi ko malaman pa paano walang koneksyon sa corruption. Kung hindi sila nababayaran, siguro incomplete yung ginawa nila. Eh, yun ang magiging ano doon. Kasi the government will not pay you unless completed ang project mo. At you prove na talagang kompleto. Kasi may mga kontraktor na iniiwan na lang yung mga proyekto nila. O kaya hanggat hindi mo inaayos yung proyekto mo, eh talagang hindi ka babayaran. So, won't the palace want to look into this, sir? Don't you think that ganitong mga statements or allegations would scare off potential uh, investors or contractors into participating into the Build, Build, Build program? Congressman and Daya cannot be lawyering to these contractors. If the contractors have something to complain, they should themselves file the complaint and address their concerns to the respective department or to... Department of Public Works. Eh kung uh, hindi, hindi kaya yata nagre-reklamo yung mga contractor, but naman, you can, how can you be more popist than the Pope? Sir, on another topic, si Senator uh, Trillanes, um, his recent statement on President Duterte's unannounced trip to Hong Kong, mm. sabi niya, nagpagamot ka or naglabas ka ng pera or both, but definitely, hindi ka pumunta doon para magpahinga or mag-shopping lang. Baka naman he refers to himself every time he goes out of the country. Yun. <laughs> Nagpunta siya ron kasi yun ang pakiusap ng kanyang anak na maging parang blowout sa kanya. And it was a birthday of uh, Miss Hanalita Vansenya. It was a rest and recreation and a celebration. Sir, Ito lang ang presidente, birin-birin magpahinga. Sir, kasi this is uh, President Duterte's second trip to Hong Kong in a few months. Oh. So may mga haka-haka na baka pumunta daw doon para magpa-check up ulit. Alam mo, <laughs> alam po ninyo, sabi ko nga, pag ang isang presidente ay pumunta sa Hong Kong, oh, for that matter, kahit sa ang lugar, hindi mo may tatago yun sa mata ng lahat including lalo na mga Pilipino. Malalaman mo yon. Papasok ka lang sa ospital eh, daming Pilipino. Di sana nakarating na sa atin. Eh, yung mga kabalbalan ni Mr. Trillanes eh, hindi na eh, kinapabayaan na lang namin. Sanay na kami sa mga kasinungalingan niya. We're used to his falsities. So, Chika lang, bakit Hong Kong? Eh, yun ang, yun, ang, yun ang gusto ni Kitty. Tsaka malapit, para mabilis kang makabalik. Thank you po. Okay, questions, MPC? Wala, wala na tayong question. Ah, Joseph. Somebody else is doing the rice tarification, but from the palace side, what's your assurance? No? Ano po yung, uh, ano tagas? Sasabihin niyo sa mga farmers na hindi ito makakasama sa kanila. Because there's going to be maybe a flood of cheaper rice that can probably be detrimental to our farmers. What's your message to them, sir? Eh, gaya na nga ng pinaliwanag ni Presidente sa kanila, may mga safeguards yun na mapuproteksyonan din sila. Pinaliwanag na sa kanila ni Presidente yun. But that, was that, yes. Yeah. Sige, na, iba yung was this during the yes. meeting of the rice? Correct. Uh, you were saying, sir, again? Sorry. Then, uh, naalala ko lang, meron dinagdag si Mr. Trillanes eh. <laughs> yung sa survey, Sabi niya, yun daw survey ng SWS. Dahil 
seven out of ten Filipinos are saying that wala nang mga drug addicts doon sa mga lugar nila. Eh, sabi naman nung, nung Trillanes, eh, totoo nga kasi thousands ang pinatay kaya wala nang mga addicts. And then so we issued a statement na we welcome that survey because it validates the success of this administration's war against drugs. Eh, ang banat ng Trillanes eh. Uh, Mr. Panello, what are you celebrating? The ruthlessness of your boss, Mr. Trillanes. Una una, hindi ko boss si presidente. Kami ni presidente, and for all that matter, kasama ka don. E eh, tayo yung mga workers lamang ng pamalaan. Ang pinagsisilbihan natin ang ating mga kababayan. Wala tayo mga boss. Ang boss natin ang taong bayan. Kung gagamitin mo yung boss, so palagay ko. Dapat eh, pag-aaralan mong maingi yung mga salita mo para hindi ka nadudulas. <laughs> Pati tuloy itong baso, nag- nagre-react sa'yo. <laughs> Nahuhulog. <laughs> sir, going back. <laughs> Ay, tapos sabi yun. Going back, sir, dun sa rice. Um, you said there are going to be safeguards, no? Uh, what are these safeguards, sir? I haven't seen the, the law, but yan ang sinabi ni President. I'm just right. repeating to you what he said. Can I point to mm. the rice fund? Ten billion rice fund. <clears throat> oh, the, that's one. This is it. Oh, yeah. But can you imagine ten billion para sa kanila? How can they utilize it, sir? Well, in many ways. Like for instance, kung kailangan nila ng mga pananim, kung kailangan nila ng mga gamit, kung kailangan nila sa irrigation, marami. Basta yun eh, para sa kanilang benefits. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, Ace Romero. Secretary, do you agree with the NBI's theory of continuous publication? <coughs> ang, hindi, hindi, tiyo, ang, ang teorya ng DOJ. Hindi NBI. Or the DOJ. Or the DOJ. Yeah. yeah. Ang sinasabi ng DOJ, yung article nung 2012, nirepublish mo ang 2014. Oh, eh, di pasok na sa cyber law. Kahit na walang continuing na sinasabi, eh, hindi nga. Kasi, pinablis mo noong 2012, nirepublish mo noong 2014, o di parang mayroong kang bagong article na pinablish. Eh, pero, kasi di ba, parang nang lumalabas ngayon, even before yung enactment ng law, makukover yung articles na napublish before that. Well, dapat Tama one year. Ay, problema nga, pumasok doon sa, ano eh, nirepublish mo eh. O hindi eh, parang may original article ka. Kahit punctuation lang yung papalitan. Anong punctuation? Kasi punctuation lang daw yung, minor edit lang daw yung napalitan doon sa... O di with more reason. <laughs> Kung minor lang pala. Kasi, in effect, nirepublish mo din tayo. Eh, wala ka naman palang binago, kundi yun. Well, some are saying it can be a bad precedent. Kasi maaring... It can lead to, you know, know whatever, you know, you know, whatever it is, whether the opinion of the DOJ or the opinion of the respondent is correct or not. I think we have to leave it to the courts to decide whether or not sino ang tama sa kanila. Kaya nga tayo mayroong hukuman, kaya nga dinimanda para malaman natin kung tama yung kanilang teorya na hindi dapat pumasok sa cybercrime. Thank you, Sek. Okay, may questions? Oh, Joseph, uh, RJ. Microphone, nasa unahan mo. Thank you. Hi, sir. On rice certification bill again, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, uh, certi it's uh, certified, it was certified as urgent by the president, but why was it signed late or the 11th hour? What happened really, sir, before that? Eh, maraming trabaho, Presidente. Okay. <laughs> eh, sa dami ng, sa tambak ng trabaho, natambak siguro yung kanilang lamesa. Right, so the you fuck is the sign? You know what mahalaga nun eh. It was signed within the prescribed law, uh, number of days. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. Sir, uh, update lang sa position ni President sa moratorium on new casino licenses. Has the uh, PADCOR chief met with him last month? None that I know of. Ang All alam right. ko, meron siyang, gusto siyang may ipagkita, pero hindi, hindi ko pa, uh, I have not heard na nagkita sila. Pero, sir, Wala pang info. 
the president hasn't changed his mind yet on relaxing the until such time as he makes a formal statement on the matter i think kung ano yung dati niyang opinion subsist all right thank you uh, bernadette bernadette oh bernadette Sir, sa rice tarification po, uh, what does the government intend to do to help farmers who may lose money with the drop in farm gate prices po? Because they're saying po that um, right now, I think uh, farm groups are saying po that uh, because of the anticipated passage of the rice tarification law, uh, buying price of traders for palay suddenly declined in January po. Eh, wala pa po yung RCEP, sir. So what, are, uh, what is the government um, uh, planning to do po to help them po. In the meantime, na wala pa yung RCEP, sir. As pointed out by Joseph, there is a 10 billion fund. 10 billion fund under the law. So, magagamit yung 10 billion yun. Tsaka alam mo, actually, sa tingin ko lang, ha, yung reklamo ng mga farmers, mukhang hindi naman yung mga farmers mismo. Eh. Mukhang yung mga middlemen na nagre-reklamo. Eh. Parang sila talaga kumikita. Yung mga farmers, hindi eh. So like for instance, yung coconut planters, hindi naman mga farmers yata yun. Parang yun ang mga, yun ang mga, the middleman. Anyway, sa tingin ko makakatulong eventually sa mga farmers yun. Talo na yung 10 billion fund, laking bagay yun. But sir, for the meantime, because I think the fund will be um, effective pa after 90 days. Ap oh, yeah, after 90 days, after 90 after days, days eh, tatlong buwan lang yun. But it's still three months, sir. Is that, isn't it that the palace should be concerned eh, okay about? Okay na yun. Eh, Nakatiis na nga tayo ng ilang buwan ng ganyan, di ba? Hindi lang ilang buwan. <laughs> How many years ng ganyan nga eh? Ngayon lang nga tayo nagkaroon ng presidente ng ganito eh. Nab nabibigyan solusyon yung mga, in mga hindi inintindi, pina hindi pina yung pinabayaan ng mga nakaraan. Kagaya ng war on drugs. Eh, eto ba magkaganito kalaki kung ito eh, nabigyan ng pansin ng lahat ng mga administrasyon na karan. Hindi. Mabuti nagkaroon tayo ng presidenteng ganito. Masigasig, masinop, malikain. Okay. So, sorry ah, last na po. Um, how does Malas Malacanang respond to farm groups eyeing to seek a TRO from the court because they are questioning the legality of some of the provisions of the rice tarification law po? It's the right. So is Malacanang confident that the rice tarification law will stand the constitutionality test po should it be questioned by farmers po before the court po? Regardless of the confidence or not of the palace, the palace welcomes any move from any sector questioning any act of the government. That is democratic process in working. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, for RJ. Sir, why did you say they are just middlemen and not farmers? Hindi, kasi hindi ba, ang mga farmers, hindi naman silang yung pagdating ng produce, hindi naman silang nagbibenta eh, mm -hmm. sa market eh. Merong kumukuha ng mga produce nila. Murang-mura mm -hmm. ang benta nila, pagdating sa mga middlemen, sila ang nagsusupply sa market. Kaya lumalaki. So that's your basis sir for saying that those who are complaining are middlemen? Sa, sa, sa aking pananaw, mm -hmm. my personal view on the matter, kasi Yun ang mga ng farmers. Kami naman, kami ang nahihirapan dito kasi hindi naman kami ang diretsyong nagbebenta ng mga produce namin eh. We are dependent on the middlemen. So supposedly that these are not farmers, then their concerns are not valid? With respect to the farmers. Mm -hmm. With respect to the farmers. Is it's that... valid for them. Uh -huh. And I can understand. That's why sabi nga ni Presidente, doon tayo. I can understand what what uh, from where you're coming from but it's for the greater good to the greatest people you've never heard any farmers complaining or expressing their concerns real farmers Wala ako narinig. Wala. I don't know. Ka narinig? <laughs> no one approached you or you n never heard from complain nila kami mura kami magbenta ang complain nila kulang kami sa pananim. Ang complaint nila, kulang kami sa irrigation. O kaya yung 10 billion pan, yun ang malaking tulong sa kanila. Alright, thank you. Okay, may tanong pa? Okay, Joseph. Sir, soundbite. Soundbite lang, sir, yung sa general tax, um, general amnesty, he doesn't want that, no? Yung mga may utang before, tapos nalimutan na yung utang nila. He does not want a parang 
a sweep of all those utangs. Now he wants them to pay, correct? Yes. Yeah, yes. Ayo ayo niya na general tax amnesty. Mm, bakit po? Eh kasi nga <laughs> that will encourage them not to pay taxes in the future kasi anyway, meron na naman general tax amnesty pagdating ng panahon. Mm. And the effect of this to the government if they don't pay the taxes? Oh, siyempre, di ba? Uh, where do we rely on the finances and the resources kung hindi sa mga taxpayers? Sige po, sir. Thank you. Okay, and PC, wala na tayong tanong? Acer, oh. hey, for the sir. first time. <laughs> sir, um, a statement from the Presidential Task Force on Media Security says that they are facilitating discussions among media partners for a consolidated put position on the decriminalization of libel. Sir, what is your position on this? Do you think libel should remain a crime? Mm. So without preempting the position of the task May pro and con eh. Merong nagsasabi na dapat tanggalin yan. Merong din nagsasabing hindi. Personally, ako lang ha, personal, not the palace view. Sa akin, pwede na yung civil suit. Pero parang mas marami, pati sa mga periodista, parang sinasabi, hindi, mabuti yan. Para hindi mag-abuso yung mga kasama natin. Like si, ano, si Manikad. Di ba, he's running for the Senate. He mentions uh, during the, sinasabi niya na, hindi. Sabi niya, dapat huwag natin i-decriminalize kasi mag-aabuso ng mga nasa media. Pero alam niyo, let me, let me tell you this. <laughs> Yung libel, una -una, it's an ordinary crime. Maliit din ang penalty. Pangalawa, mahirap probahan yon, Kasi you have proved malis. Mahirap mag ng malis. Mahirap mag-demanda nga ng libel dahil baka wala kagad probable cause. Lalong mahirap mag -proba. Kaya, tell me, sino na ba alam nyo na na-convict ng libel na periodista? Ang alam na alala ko lang si the late Beltran, wala nang iba. In fact, kaya nga yung mga media, hindi ba they're saying yung mga mga narinig ko na, it's a badge of honor when you sue me for libel. Ibig sabihin, okay ang aking mga artikulo na yayanin ka. Question? MPC Joseph Okay, wala na. Thank you, Thank MPC. You. Thank you, Pre Presidential Chief Legal Counsel and Presidential Spokesperson, Salvador Panelo, back to my studio sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Television Network. Sino pupunta bukas? Nabaw. We don't know yet. Are you going? Yeah.